Okay, uh, hello all. I'm going to show you um, uh, in a quick demonstration how to set up a test for students to be able to answer online. Um, it is not the creation of the test in the portal. You would actually just have a hard copy of the test and this would allow them to answer very quickly on their computer, iPad, or phone um, simply by logging in and submitting their answers. So you will go to Teak Score. Tag is where you actually create like a, a test from their database, but Teak Score is just simply where you make um, like an answer sheet. So we're going to make an answer sheet. I'm borrowing, um, we still have Melody's, uh, Melody Bryant, so she doesn't have any tests in here at this time. Some of you have done this before. We're going to go to one area that says test key area, and we're going to make a new test. We're just going to fill these little guys in. So I'm going to say it's an English language arts test. We're going to say it's seventh grade. Um, you just have to put a version number that has three digits between 000 and 999. You do have to, um, you can't duplicate. So it will tell you if they already have that version. I'm going to try 123. Um, it's English. You can put the approximate test date. And I'm going to put pre-test just for myself on this description post-test. Let's see, it's for my t-test. It automatically defaults to a passing standard of 70. You can change that if you need to. And then you have these options for star. If you have anybody else who's going to be editing, you'll have an option to add them there. So I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to thread through my content. So I did English and I'm going to say I want this is where it, I, it grabs my teaks for me. Essentially, I'm going to do seventh grade. This is for AP if you're doing AP and I'm going to click save. So I can see now it's threading my English. Um, seventh grade objectives. Now I'm going to go up here to this area and I want to work on my key. So it defaults to 10 questions. I'm going to add in this items area 12 and you'll see as I click apply it's going to give me 12 questions. Now you can do answer choices um, A, B, C, D all the way through if that's what you want for every answer. You can also do a, B, C, D alternated with F, G, H, J. So depending on what your test um, answers have, you do have that option. So if I wanted my first answer is going to be A, my second answer, if I'm doing the F, G, H, J is J. Remember to alternate those. I'm going to do B and then I'm going to do H and then my next answer is C and J and B and J and then um, D and F. Now these last two, you have two other options. If it's a math test, I can put in the exact number, 225, and they have to get that exactly right. It will recognize it. Or if I want to be able to grade an open-ended response, I can put R for rubric. And this is going to allow me to change up some of my scoring. Now, right now I have two options for TEKS, dual coding, Reporting categories, ELPS, AP. You're probably only going to want to use the TEKS and that's what it defaults to. Right now, remember, we're seventh grade ELA. So if I click on any of these boxes, it automatically pulls up seventh grade ELA. Now, notice that it has the 2009 TEKS. I'm guessing with DMAC, he, they may not pre-populate um, the new standards. I will call and check with them until next year for K-8 because they're not going to be affected on assessments until then. So that may be a little bit of a headache for some of my ELA peeps if you're putting um, your tests in here because you'll have to back map it if you've changed your TEKS already in your lesson planning. Um, but that's just, just a heads up. That should be changing soon. I'll check with them. You can click over here for just readiness, just supporting, or just process, and or all. And then you just simply, it's already clicked over here on number one. I just go through. I can scroll over. Let's say I'm going to describe themes. Um, I'm going to just click through and do a bunch of these just so you can kind of see how quickly you can assign a text. So now I have these texts assigned and I'm going to save that. So I've got my header, I've got my content, I've got my key. Now I want to score. So it defaults to 
all of the 1 through 11 to evenly distribute. But because the rubric gives you an option of 0 to 4, um, scoring something 0 to 4, meaning you would get half credit up to whatever you consider mastery. If it were me, just to make it simple, I'm going to say either they have it or they don't. So I'm going to change this 0, 4 to a 0, 1. And then I'm going to come over here and mastery would be a 1, 0 would be non-mastery, and now you can see that it's evenly distributed here. So if you want to change and add more weight to a question, you can simply add weight by clicking on that factor. Once I'm happy with this, I'm going to click Save, and I, I'm going to save it just in case to make sure. My history will show me that I've created a test and that I have access added. And you can also schedule. If you know the day and time you want to give it, you can schedule it so it will open and close. My suggestion, now that you have a test uh, key created, is to go back here to Test Keys and click on List. Because now that we have one, it's in our list. And you can see I've made a couple right here. This one right, that we made uh, to be distributed on 831 is what I put in there. I can edit my test. I can print the key, I can delete the test, I can print a paper copy, or I can say, okay, I'm ready for my kids to go in and start it using um, their test to answer. So I would turn this guy on a day ahead of time or day of. You click on him. I want to enable. Now, this is all kids need to get into that test. They just need this online session ID, their birthday, and their six-digit lunch number, which they use for everything else. So that test is ready to give. Once kids are in there and it's ready to be opened up, and they, they're ready to put their answers in, they log in to DMAC, and I can watch them. We've been hanging out in this test keys area, but once your kids are actually testing, let's say it's two weeks into school, you've given them the code, they've taken the test, and they're ready to put their answers in, once they're all hanging out in there and you're in your room, you can see the progress by going to Documents and Sessions and picking the test that you're on. So I've got this test right here. I don't see any students right here, but the minute your students are in and they're logging into that test and getting ready to put their answers in, you'll start to see all these names populate. Clara Pulliam, Johnny Cash, all the names will populate. And you should be able to see that they're active. And then you can see as they're going through, they're 50% finished, they're 60% finished. You can see how close they are to finishing. Once they click Submit, you immediately can see what they scored. If anybody gets in trouble, you can always refresh them. If somebody um, has trouble, you can also cancel, reset, or delete any of those test documents as you're looking. So this gives you a lot of control uh, kind of as a test administrator in your own class if you need to refresh those sessions if somebody gets kicked out for some reason. And then last but not least, once they actually have data in there, you can go over here to reports and you can pull the reports for the actual test so you can analyze those. So that is a really quick way to create an online test session and it's really easy to use. Holler at me if you have any trouble. Thanks.